The Folsian Society is back, and they're back with a vengeance. Deal the cowboy, Mr. McLean. You Americans are all alike. But this time, John Wayne doesn't walk into the sunset with Grace Kelly. Scary Cooper, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Hans. Dallas still stinks. You're my way, King Ding Bad here, and I hope everybody's having a great Monday. Well, as good of a Monday as possible after a season ending playoff loss uh, yesterday. Me, it, this is a hard day for me. This is a, a sad day because it's really kicking in, you know, the finality of being out being done your season is over it's kicking in today and, and i hate it you know this this time of year already after new year's because like like during the holidays uh like from thanksgiving through new year's i get up here like i get super jacked i love it it's the greatest time every second of every day is wonderful and then after new year's it just crashes. It crashes down. And when I have the Eagles in the playoffs to get me through that January, because that January to me is just, it's like the worst time of the year. It's just, there's a lull in the year. Then it, And then it picks back up. But to have the Eagles to get through that is always a good thing. And to have it be after the holiday season, after New Year's, and now the Eagles are out the next few weeks, I hate it. I hate it. I do. I hate it. And the only thing I can do really is turn the page, start thinking about future things, things coming up, what's going to happen with the Eagles in the offseason. And that's why, you know, you'll see me talking about a lot of it because it's how I cope. It's how I get through. Um, it, yesterday was tough. Yesterday was a horrible loss. And of all the ways in which I could have, you know, thought about how the Eagles would lose a game, this was the worst way possible because the truth of the matter is this. When Carson Wentz went out, when he went out, it was over. It was over. I mean, sure, I rooted for McCown. I wanted to see him do it. I was hoping he could. I was trying to stay positive. I was hoping to will an upset, but it wasn't meant to be. And the truth is, when Carson went out, the air went out of most Eagle fans. And, you know, to me, Carson getting hurt, it, it sucks. It's horrible. Because I think Carson has shown himself, in my opinion, to be a franchise quarterback. He showed he can make guys better. He took over that team. He became a leader. And it's going to be unquestioned going into next year. But it's a shame that it came on a cheap shot. And it was a, into the back of his head. And it was a concussion. Something he had no control of. And what's even worse than all that is the Folsian Society is back. They're back. They're back in full effect. I thought these people were gone. They were all hiding in the dark. And they were waiting for week after week after week after week after week for Carson to mess up so they could stomp his ass. And that's what they did. And they are back in full effect. And I'm going to have to deal with them all all season. So make sure you get your Foley and Society shirt. <laughs> because look, they're back. And they ain't going anywhere. And you know, I guess so be it. So be it, because the day will come when Carson Wentz wins championships. It's coming. It's coming. This was a little setback. It sucks. But you know what? When it comes to Carson, when it comes to being an Eagle fan, nothing's ever easy for us. Nothing. Nothing's ever easy. But eventually, the payoff will come. And when it comes for us, it's always sweeter than anybody else. So hang in there. It's coming. It's coming. <sighs> But man, it's hard. It's hard. And, you know, really, in, in truthfulness, it's, it, in, in being all honest, you know, the Folian Society, they're not even as bad as the national media. The national media and the people out there saying Carson Wentz is injury prone and this kind of thing, to me, is absolutely ridiculous. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. See, I look at concussions completely separate as writ other body injuries because one you can't you you don't have a choice in concussion protocol to go back in and play 
Once the doctor says you have a concussion or doesn't think you can play, you're done. Coaches can't put you back in. Uh, you can't put yourself back in. It's not like you have a broken rib or you, your, your shoulder hurts or your ankle hurts, and then you fight through it. You don't have a choice. So maybe 10 years ago, Carson Wentz probably plays, comes back in that game, but he wasn't allowed, and it was out of his control. And the reason why he had a concussion the reason why he had one was because he was cheap shotted. That's the truth. And there are actual people that are telling me that it was a legal hit. It was not late. There were at least four different penalties on that play. Now, I'm not complaining about it because we lost. I'm not trying to complain that it happened. It happened. It is what it is. Jadavion Clowney did what he had to do because that's what, look. That's unspoken rule in football. You take out the quarterback, you win the game. They have Buddy Ryan feasted on that for years. I get it. But Carson Wentz took a cheap shot in the back of the head. And there were at least four different penalties on that play. You had spearing. You had helmet to helmet. You had hitting a defenseless receiver. And it was just a late hit. So, I mean, and if you're saying to me, well, well, he didn't, he dove, he didn't slide, so he was never defenseless. Go back and watch the Atlanta Falcons-Eagles week two. The two-point conversion where Carson's running, trying to get in the end zone. He dives, and as he's diving, they blew it dead because they said as soon as he started to dive, he gave himself up. You see, you can give yourself up diving because if you're diving and going down, they're going to rule the play dead. And Clowney, you can see He's looking at Carson, he sees Carson going down, and then he goes in with his head. It was a penalty. Now, if he would have, let's say he would have slid, even though he was behind the line of scrimmage, like everybody wants him to, maybe you get your 15-yard penalty. Maybe. But he's still getting late hit. He's still getting hit. Because once because a late hit is a late hit is a late hit. Cheap shot is a cheap shot. That's just the truth. And you think that sliding would have prevented it? It wouldn't have. It wouldn't have. He got hit right in the back of his head. And I don't care who you are. You get hit like that, 270-pound guy, however much Clowney weighs, going full force in the back of your head, you're going to feel it too. Otherwise, in boxing, why wouldn't they let you hit people in the back of the head? Not allowed to hit somebody in the back of the head. Nobody, nobody is immune to getting hit in the back of the head like that. Okay? So... You know, you, 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 you can't do anything about it. He got hit in the back of the head. It's brutal, it, it, you know. And, and even in boxing, they'll tell you, you know. In boxing, they'll tell you, you know, you're out there, you're boxing, right? They'll tell you, it, the, the punches you see coming don't hurt as the one that you can't see. Think of the Foreman-Moore fight, right? Where, where you, you look at all these big shots Foreman throws. It's the sneaky punch. It was not even a hard punch. It was the sneaky right hand that came after the left that Moore didn't see. Went right down. That's what happens. Carson didn't see it coming. Couldn't defend himself from that. It was a cheap shot. It's the way it is. Um, you know, and, and shout out to Russell Wilson because what a class act that guy is. To go up to Doug and check on Carson. Uh, you you got to like Russell Wilson. So, you know, uh, congratulations, Seahawks fans. You won. You won. And that's the way it goes. Um, but... I think the injury prone label is unfair. If Carson, let's say he hurt his shoulder, his ankle, he hurt his knee again, something like that, I would say, yeah, well, it's a fair question. But a concussion, a head injury, that's not something you can really, uh, in my opinion, attach to an injury uh, prone label. Now, if he gets multiple concussions and has multiple concussion problems, that's different. But he doesn't, and he's he had a concussion by all counts. He's doing much better today. He feels good. He, you know, you sneak out of that game, he probably would play next week or would have a chance to. Um, but it, it, it's horrible. It, it, was, it was bad luck. We'll get through it. Carson will get through it. He's established himself as an elite franchise quarterback. And his days are coming. His days are coming. And I believe if we, he would have played, I believe we win that game. I don't believe we hit the red zone that many times and don't score without Carson Wentz. But it is what it is. Um, I'm very proud of this team and Carson this year. It's depressing to lose. But there's a lot of things uh, to look forward to. Now, either today, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. I'm not sure. Maybe tonight, tomorrow, I'm going to put out a video talking about who I want to stay who I want to go because I think there has to be a lot of changes made 
in this team this offseason. Uh, personally, I think you have to cut the fat. You have to try to get younger. You got to try to get younger this year, okay? The, the one thing we learned about this past season was that we have young guys that can step up and play. And this is a young man's game. This is a young man's game. And that's part of the problem why we have so many injuries. This is a young man's game, and you got to get younger. You also got to get faster. You got to get faster at the outside wide receiver positions. Of course, Deshaun Jackson will be back, but that's not enough. Um, I think the Eagles are going to have to make a lot of changes. So I want to put out something who I want to stay, who I want to go. And, you know, we'll talk about that later. We also have 10 projected picks in this draft we're going to be picking number 21 that's where we're going to be at not a bad spot it gives you some maneuverability to move up if you have to and go back if you have to um but we're going to have at least i think they're projecting 10 picks for us we're going to have our 21st pick overall our second round pick our third round pick a compensatory third round pick for nick Foles, our fourth round pick a compensatory uh, pick for Jordan Hicks, a fourth round compensatory pick for Jordan Hicks. Then we're going to have three fives, uh, one of our own, one's a trade from New England, and then one is compensatory for Golden Tate. And then I think we have like a six round pick. We have a lot of picks and we got to get these picks right. We got to get these picks right because in my opinion, it's a big deal for us. We need to get guys that can come in and contribute. Me personally, as we sit right here right now, I'm going wide receiver with two of my first three picks. I'm serious. I'm going first round, wide receiver, second round, corner, third round, wide receiver again. I think the Eagles have to have that this year. I think they have to get fast and solid with young wide receiver talent. You know, and, and, and I can't wait to see Greg Ward Jr. next year. I think he deserves a spot. Obviously, Boss Scott, he'll be playing uh, with Miles Sanders. There's a lot of things to be excited about, but we have to hit on a draft. I also, personally, I would like to see Mike Grill gone. I don't know that that's going to happen. Either way, the Eagles have to start incorporating a vertical passing game on this on their offense. They have to become a vertical passing team like the Kansas City Chiefs. Because, let me tell you, that's, that's Carson Wentz's strengths to throw the ball downfield for chunk yards. We need to become that kind of team. Uh, it would be very, better suited for Carson, I believe, and, and hopefully we'll do it. But there's a lot of stuff to talk about this season. Um, Malcolm Jenkins came out today. He said he's not playing on his um, his deal. His one He has one year left on his deal. He's not playing on it. So the Eagles are going to have to either let him go, trade him, or they're going to have to re-sign him. Me personally... I don't really want old guys back. He's the one exception that I would try to sign for like two years. I would try like a two-year, maybe a three-year deal with a way out of the third year. But I would do something like that and try to bring him back. But it can't be for tons of money. It can't. And I'm hoping that they can sign him and work something out with him. Uh, we're all waiting to see what Jason Kelsey's going to do. He may retire. I hope not. I think he's the best center in football. Um, but we'll see what he does. And then you have like Jason Peters who's like, I'm ready to play two more years. Uh, I love Jason Peters. Great player. Hall of Famer. No question about it. I, I got to move on for you, though. I got to. I You want to come as the backup? Fine. But it, this is Andre Dillard's job. He's got to be the left tackle next year, in my opinion. A lot to talk about. A lot of things happening. And, and we'll see. I mean, the NFC... The NFC East by as a whole is changing, right? You got uh, Rivera in Washington, which I think is a great signing for them and and to me it's going to be who's his offensive coordinator going to be who's his coach going to be can he develop Haskins you know the Giants we're waiting to see what they do they get Matt Rule great pick I don't know if they will but but I hope that's not who they get and then of course the, the Cowboys they got Mike McCarthy today which to me is beautiful um I think he's a good coach, but I think he's an underachieving coach. A guy that had Aaron Rodgers for all those years, only won one Super Bowl, should have won more. I, I question um, what he can do with the Dallas Cowboys. How is it going to work with Jerry Jones? I think it's a great signing for the Eagles that Mike McCarthy's there. I'm not scared of him at all. So going to be interesting off season. We'll figure out what happens and. I'll be here pretty much almost every day. Let me give everybody who was with me from all the preseason games, all the games every week, the, the highs, the lows. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thanks to the mod. Thank you for everybody that, that has been with me. I appreciate and love you guys so much. Um, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this. 
with that said, take care. Talk to you later. And don't be a dingbat.